Well, I hope so, that it clears up some of the inconsistencies from MIFID 1. And the biggest single thing it could do in terms of our business is provide post-trade transparency, which we think is very sadly lacking in the market. So if that could be resolved, we'd be very happy. I was reasonably ambivalent on high frequency trading um, for most of this year. I have to say, it does occasionally impact our business. And I'll give you an example. If, for example, we're selling 20,000 shares of stock A, it's not uncommon if you try and hit a bid in that 20,000 across a variety of different venues that you only actually get a fill back for 16,000. Somebody with faster connections to the stock exchanges or, or the MTF, whatever venue you might be choosing to use, has got in ahead of you. And obviously that's irritating, shall we say. However, it doesn't really change our business very much. So I think you could also argue on the other side of that coin that they are providing liquidity as well as taking liquidity, because somebody is obviously benefiting from that. As to whether it harms end users, no, I don't think it particularly does. Um, I don't think it harms investors particularly. And I think for the most part, they're positive for liquidity. But I don't know if you saw, there was an article in The Economist last week um, talking about high frequency trading and talking about the potential damage it's done to um, the number of listings. Because obviously high frequency traders tend to gravitate towards the stocks with the biggest liquidity. Uh, and they tend to be followed by other investors as well. Um, one of the side effects for that, there's been less investment in research, particularly on the smaller companies, um, which is a result of just not coming to the market. So the SEC is looking into whether there is systemic risk because of these things um, and whether anything should be done about it. So I think I'll have to reserve judgment until the SEC tells us what we should think.